Hi everyone. So I've gotten a couple of questions on things that I consider to be must-have accessories versus just things that are kind of neat or fun or, or nice to have. So I thought today I might go through a list of the accessories that I feel like personally are, are must-haves that uh, that hopefully you know you guys might find interesting maybe some of these are things that you haven't thought of or maybe you have and haven't thought about using for your astrophotography so the first thing for me that's a must-have is some way to really accurately polar align your mount I like to use the pole master from QHY it's a wide field camera that just is sitting right kind of where your normal normal polar aligned scope would be on your mount uh, and then it uses software to guide you through the, the polar alignment process very accurately and very quickly. It costs a couple hundred dollars. Um, for me it's it's one of the best investments I've made in any of my astrophotography gear. It just makes getting set up easy. I'm never really worried about it. I'm never frustrated by polar alignment. Uh, I don't have to be bent over uh, and looking up a polar scope. Uh, for those that don't want to spend that money and also want a solution that's that's hopefully better than what's built in on your mount, I recommend checking out SharpCap. So so SharpCap has a polar alignment routine built in uh, that does much the same thing that the Pole Master does, where it's taking a picture, solving it, and, and telling you how far off you are. Uh, you adjust, it takes another picture, and you get, get locked in relatively quick. And SharpCap is uh, about as close to free as you can get. I don't know if the polar alignment routine is in their free version uh, or in pro, but the pro version is only something like 20 some odd dollars a year. The next one that I really want to show is filters. Especially for backyard astrophotographers, one of the first things that you really come up against is light pollution. Filters are kind of your answer to that, at least in the short term. A good filter is a shortcut, and especially when you're first starting out, you want every shortcut you can get. This is a, a Bader or Botter a hydrogen alpha filter. A good hydrogen alpha filter I would recommend for anybody. Doesn't matter if you're doing one shot color or monochrome images, get yourself a good hydrogen alpha filter. It is going to really, really show a lot of high contrast detail for the majority of early objects that you're shooting. The Horsehead Nebula, the Orion Nebula, California Nebula, uh, the Eagle, you know, things like that. And those are all hydrogen emission nebulas. And that is exactly what this filter is going to show. Even if it's just the black and white photo, if this is the only picture you take, you're gonna be really stunned with the results that you get. A lot of the videos on my channel, the hydrogen alpha is always the, the one that looks the best out of the box. If you are doing one shot color, there's, you know, you can look at some other videos that I have or other folks have on taking that hydrogen alpha data, the, the picture you took with that, and combining it with a color image that you take without the filter. And what that'll do is it'll give you the nice, rich, full color kind of image, and then all the detail comes from this filter. But beyond hydrogen alpha, you also can get into filters like uh, this one from Optolong. This is their L-Pro filter, and this is essentially a light pollution filter. Its goal is to give you a good, broad spectrum of, of color data, right? So you get your blues, your reds, your greens, that kind of thing. But it's designed to really narrowly filter out things that you would run across in street lights and that kind of thing. And this is a good solution, not just for just general imaging, uh, but if you're going to shoot a galaxy or a reflection nebula, this might help you against the standard light pollution out there. The next filter on the list is kind of a combo of some of the stuff we looked at before. This is a duo narrowband filter. There's um, several different kinds of these, you know, kind of going from duo narrowband up to what they're calling quad narrowband for like some of the newer triad filters from OPT, things like that at the time. So the one we looked at before, the hydrogen alpha filter was just looking at that hydrogen light. Normally when you're combining narrow band images into a false color image, you're going to do like a hydrogen and oxygen and a sulfur. Uh, image. So you'll have three filters. Well, they're now making these filters that pass those narrow bands in one filter. So if you have a one-shot color camera, this can get you a lot of detail 
and color in a single filter without having to do any additional com combination of separate images going through different filters. I'm not saying each one of these filters is a must have, but I'm saying pick a filter. Start with maybe a hydrogen alpha or a light pollution filter, or maybe even one of these uh, you know, multi-narrow band filters to start off with. You know, you'll be surprised how much that gets you in your images. It will enhance what you're doing so that you're getting good results early on. And that's really what's important to building up an interest in the hobby is you want something where you're getting pictures you're happy with to begin with. Because that's what's going to make you go out night after night after night and improve going forward. Speaking of going out night after night, the next thing that I have is a good pair of gloves. It may sound silly, uh, but a good pair of gloves is essential when it's starting to get cold out there. And it will get very cold out there, especially if you're going to dark sky locations. I live in Texas, so it should be pretty warm here, right? But cold is cold, especially whenever you're dealing with metal bits and bobs and stuff like that on your telescope. So a good pair of gloves are crucial. You want something that's got that isn't a mitten, right? You wanna be able to use your fingers. And in my case, I really recommend getting ones that are touch sensitive gloves. So in this case, this will allow me to use my iPhone or an iPad while I'm wearing the gloves. That is super duper helpful when I'm out at a dark sky location or even just in the backyard. I wanna pull up something on my phone or my iPad. I don't need to freeze off my hands. Going along with freezing your hands off, I recommend getting hand warmers. These are super cheap at you know Dick's Sporting Goods or Academy or other sporting goods places. You know they're a buck or two a piece. Just get a get a pack of ten or fifteen of them. Put them in your glove compartment or in a go bag or something like that. And you can always have them with you. You know they're chemically activated, so you just tear them open, and within two or three minutes you can feel them start warming up, and they'll stay warm for eight hours. Also important for being outside is a nice flashlight, specifically. A red flashlight something that will show just the red light because that'll help with your night vision a big bright white light isn't good for you it isn't good for anybody else if you're gonna be out there um, especially if you are out of dark sky sight while your camera's taking pictures you've got these two things that you can use to look up and enjoy your time out there as well so I particularly like the little headlamp variety so for me it's a little energizer one that you can get from you know, uh, Lowe's or Home Depot or other hardware stores. It's got a white setting and a slider to go to red, um, and it's great. It has a little tilt angle um, so that you, know, you can kind of point it a little bit at the ground, which makes it great to just keep walking forward. But the reason why I really like the headlamp one is when it gets dark out there, last thing you wanna do is lose your flashlight. If it's always right here, you're in good shape. Plus, if you're having to set up your gear in the middle of the night, you can keep both hands free. And I would also recommend you have a backup of some kind. In my case, uh, when I bought you know, one of my filters, uh, the company sends out, includes a little LED thing that you can put on your keychain. It's just good to have a little backup there. Next is the Celestron lens pen. Super portable, uh, collapses in, you know, it can sit in a pocket, you know, or in your bag, that kind of thing. It can clean your optics in kind of two different ways. The first is this kind of fine, spongy bit here. It's, a, you know, designed specifically to not be abrasive. And if something gets stuck on your filters or, or something like that, which I know everybody says don't ever touch them, but you know what? Every now and again, a bird is going to, like, poop on your on your scope right you know something's going to happen on your optics somewhere or on your filter you're going to have some kind of schmutz that you need to get off and this can be a nice gentle way of, of trying to work out if something's really stuck in there then you'll want to look at some specialty solutions but especially for things like eyepieces or uh, or your filters this is a, a really good end of it the other end of it and this is what i use the most is it has a little slide out brush and it's super fine it's like you know the camel hair big brushes you might get for camera lenses and that kind of thing uh, but it's a little little bit more smaller narrowed in and this is really great for dealing with your filters you want to be crazy gentle with it you don't really want to want to push too much but if you need to get a little bit off of that uh, this is very helpful 
In the same vein as the brush, I use this little uh, Rocket Air is the brand name. And all this is, is a little squeezer thing that shoots air. That's all it does. Uh, but it's much more gentle and doesn't use any chemicals like a can of compressed air would. Something like this is not going to hurt your system if you know, you've got your main lens or mirror right here and you go like this to blow the little bit of dust off of it. You know, this is really nice anytime I'm changing my camera um, you know, or, or you know, got my filter wheel open to put a different filter in or something, a quick at the beginning and end is really nice to get any big dust motes that might have fallen down to just blow right off before I seal everything up. Uh, this only costs a few dollars, you know, I think it's under 10 bucks. Uh, you can find them on Amazon or anything called Rocket Air. Next thing on my list is some way to take good flats. Um, for a lot of people, they'll use the t-shirt method, you know, stretching a t-shirt across the the front of the scope and, and shooting the twilight sky, things like that. Um, all of that can work, but I find that it's, it's hard for that to be repeatable and always easy to use. So what I did is I constructed a little flat box, or what I call a flat box. Um, you can tell it is not crazy high tech, but here's, here's what I did for it. The main part in here is a, an LED tracing panel. It ran something like $15, you know, nothing, nothing much there. I've gone through two of them because the first one fell off my scope. But you have this, it comes with three different power settings, which is really great because low is always low, medium is always medium, right? It's, it's pretty easy to get a particular brightness setting uh, each time. And then I just put a couple pieces of white printer paper in front of it to help diffuse the light and a little piece of white acrylic. And the last part is I got a layer of, of pick and pluck foam. And I literally just got out a, a, a kind of circular area about the diameter of my scope. And then that lets me sit this right on top of my scope when it's pointed up or, you know, if I've got it sitting on my desk here, you know, slide it onto the front here. And then, you know, something like this where you just put some foam around it, some painter's tape to hold it all together. And you've got yourself a pretty good light box. My last must-have accessory is an iPad. You know, when we're going through this hobby, we do a lot of different things that we focus on. We start with how do we how do we take the pictures in the first place? How do we calibrate those files right? How do we, you know, process them well on our computer and get them get them the way that we want them to be? But one of the things a lot of times gets overlooked is how are we going to enjoy the pictures, you know, today, tomorrow, and into the future? This has become, gone from a nice to have as a way to remotely control uh, my telescope rig, like sitting on the couch while it's in the backyard and that kind of thing, into something that is my primary way that I really enjoy the photos after I've taken them. It just makes a world of difference in being able to look at the pictures that I've taken. You know, and sharing this with people is just an order of magnitude better than pulling it up on your phone. You pull it up on your phone and people go, oh, that's neat, that's cool. But if you pull it up on an iPad and they're really looking at it in photo size, uh, it's just a huge wow factor. I can't tell you how many times, even probably a day, I may just slowly thumb through, you know, my images while I'm just sitting there watching TV or something. And so that really, really is nice. Um, you can even do little videos, maybe hard to see this one uh, going through here of the ISS on here, videos or GIFs. And I don't know about you, but I've got limited wall space uh, that I can hang all these photos up on. So having that capability to really look at the images in their full form is a must have for me. You know, that's what keeps me coming back and wanting to image night after night after night. And hopefully, you know, that's that's what you're after too. You know, you want to be in this hobby as something that, that you're going to keep doing. And nothing draws you back to it than being able to look at what you did before. The other really nice thing about having all this, you put all your photos in an album and then you can look at the crummy photo that you took at the very beginning, right? You've got that sitting right there and can go straight to your more recent photo, right? And it can, can really be fun to take a look at that journey for yourself. And that's really it for today. So I encourage you guys to leave me comments on what you think about these accessories. Do you have other ones that you found to be must-haves? Uh, that kind of thing. Um, and, you know, until next time, I wish everybody clear skies. Thanks.